Yeah. I'm most happy, I guess we all are in a way, uh, for Ringo's success. Because the, the other three of us, you know, it always went round Ringo was dumb, but he ain't dumb. But he didn't have that much of a writing ability and he wasn't known for writing his own material. And there was a bit of a worry that, you know, although he can make movies and he does make movies and he's good at it, that how was his recording career going to be? And in general, it's probably better than mine, actually. You heard the jokes. John was the smart one. Paul, the cute one. George, the deep one. And Ringo, well, Ringo was the luckiest boy in the world. But. Did you ever hear this? He has the magic touch. I wouldn't be a drummer without Ringo. That is the DNA of pretty much everything I do. If you hear his drumming, you know exactly who it is. There are millions upon millions of us out there who not only were influenced, but wanted to be Ringo Starr. Ringo was the coolest one. If some of the most acclaimed drummers in the whole world credited Ringo as the drummer they aspired to be, well, doesn't that make him deserve to be called a Beatle? And also, did you know that the Beatles themselves actually asked Ringo to be in their band? And he was so popular that people would come from many, many miles away just to see Ringo perform with the bands that he was in previous to the Beatles. After all, he's hilarious. I'm curious as to why people keep chanting this negative sentiment about Ringo Starr. The only thing I can figure is that they are echoing the things they've heard about him, not actually felt about his drumming. We have this tendency to judge creativity against proficiency equally. They are not. For instance, if you were to create the solo or the solos to Bohemian Rhapsody, that is wildly more difficult than playing and covering a solo from a song that you did not write. Because that's where the magic is in music, in the creation of it. Just because Ringo Starr wasn't doing Wipeout on every single song, doesn't mean he's the drummer that is universally ragged on. Ringo was the kind of drummer that melodic bands dreamed of. He was the kind of drummer that never did fills and licks over and over again, like some sort of epileptic Mariah Carey. Listen to A Day in the Life where a man played the drums that sounded like he blew his mind out in a car. He didn't notice that the lights had changed. Hear it. Really hear it. Look for a drummer who didn't just play the backbeat but played memorable and incredibly creative grooves like Come Together. It has to count for something. Now that we got all that out of the way, Let's talk about this absolutely incredible song, Yellow Submarine. Paul McCartney, as usual, just about to go to bed. As I'm doing this research, I'm wondering if Paul was some sort of narcoleptic at the time. I, I'm not sure. Anyway, Paul says somewhere between the real world and the dream world, between consciousness and nothingness, Yellow Submarine came to him. Paul said, I remember thinking of a children's song, then then the word yellow came to me, and then the submarine came to me, and I thought, you know, that's very cool, kind of a childish thing, Yellow Submarine. Now, this isn't the origin we all kind of want. It's not that profound meaning behind something that we so like. Like, what's the metaphor behind the submarine trapped on this rock, 
hurtling itself around the sun, pinned between the proverbial nautical walls. The immense pressure of society popping our ears as we descend into this confined life until our delicate bodies give in to the implosion. And we exclaim in one last weak dying breath, for God's sake, somebody delete my internet history. But no, it isn't full of such adult worries. Although it was written simultaneously with Eleanor Rigby, and that is some very heavy stuff. But Yellow Submarine is a song about a story a father tells his son, who talks about meeting an ancient mariner long, long ago, who told him about the land of submarines. The mariner took the boy across the sea to witness this magical place, and they lived for some time deep below the ocean in that very same yellow submarine. Oh, and kids, if, if somebody comes up to you at the beach and says, hey, you want to see my yellow submarine? Uh, just, just, just find a police officer or something. Don't, don't go with them. Don't, don't, don't go with them. One really amazing thing about this song was how it was recorded. All those sounds and voices you hear in the background were the result of an absolutely epic party at the recording studio. The Beatles invited all their friends over to the studio and microphones were placed haphazardly all over the place. And just to the side of that studio was a small cupboard full of oddities that the Beatles decided to raid it. The entire collection of instruments and sound effect boxes were strewn all over the studio while people grabbed bells and whistles and gongs at random. Oh, and hilariously, John Lennon wanted to record his voice underwater for the song. So he attempted to sing while gargling water till he inevitably almost choked to death on it. Then he said, let's put me in a tank of water, put a microphone above me, and I'll sing it from there. And everyone pretty much immediately convinced him that that wasn't a good idea and uh, you'll die. Help me! Headphones! Help me! Help! Torpedoed again, eh? And fun fact, Rolling Stone's Mick Jagger is actually at the party. And you can hear his voice in the chorus of Yellow Submarine. Yellow Submarine showed how incredibly versatile the Beatles could be, that they could take a simple childhood song and give it to the drummer who wasn't really keen on singing and still make it so famous and beloved. You probably even sang it when you were a kid and you probably sang it now too. Ringo's charming and slightly off-key song is probably one of the most recognizable tunes ever. And it's my humble opinion that he's probably one of the coolest guys ever. A mod or a rocker? Uh, no, I'm a mocker. <laughs>